Hey everybody, John Fenn here, Church Without Walls International, CWOWI.org. Hope you'll visit our website. We're a house church network. It's there on our website. You can sign up for my weekly thoughts and my monthly e-newsletter. My weekly thoughts is a weekly teaching that comes out by email Friday morning U.S. time. And it's in the headers of those two emails that we put information about our Zoom online meetings, our conferences, uh, other meetings around uh, the world. So I uh, hope you'll join us there, cwowi.org. Um, I want to get right into this. And the question is this, where is your faith centered? And people would say, well, I believe in Jesus. Um, you know, I, I believe in Jesus. I'm pure, you know, in the name of Jesus. And that can be true, but oftentimes a person will package belief in Jesus, faith in Christ through a construct, through a formula, through a structure that is built by man. For instance, years ago, I talked to somebody who had backslidden, what we call backslidden, which means they left the church. And from church people's point of view, they fell away from the Lord. But when this gentleman came back to the Lord, he said, you know, I didn't really fall away from the Lord. I fell away from church. He said, I still talk to the Lord, you know, in my work and daily life. He said, but I couldn't handle the church that he was presented through. I couldn't handle the structure that he was presented through. And that's one element there. You probably know people like that. And maybe maybe you too have been hurt by uh, the structure at some point and thought, if I wish faith in Jesus would just be so simple, just between me and, and me and him. And I'm telling you that it should be. And if you are wrapping yourself up in other formulas and such, then I hope you can extricate yourself from that. You know, Paul said in 1 Corinthians chapter 2 and verse 5, he said, My preaching to you was not with the wisdom of men, so that your faith would not be in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. In fact, he said in 1 Corinthians 1 17, he said, he said, if I came to you with man's wisdom, it would make the power of the cross of no effect. And so a lot of times Christians are running around saying, you know, I wish I had more power in my life. I wish I could you know, feel closer to the Lord and everything. And so my question to them is usually around 1 Corinthians 1 17. What I'm trying to find out is have they placed their faith in the wisdom of men, which then nullifies the power of God, according to 1 Corinthians 1 17. And again, 1 Corinthians 2 5, have you placed your faith in the wisdom of men rather than the power of God? And now I want you to think about that statement. Paul said, I want your faith to be in the power of God. And so what does that mean? Do you see his presence, his activity in your life on a daily basis? It's not just, just the big, quote-unquote, miracles. It's, it has to do with the ongoing presence of God in your life to time your steps, to order your life according to his purpose. Do you see his handiwork in you? Do you see his timing in your life? And the answer should be yes, absolutely. I see him. I feel his presence down on the inside of me, et cetera. But what if it isn't? For instance, going back to what I had mentioned earlier, there are Christians who, whose faith is more in the wisdom of men rather than the power of God, and they don't realize it. For instance, there are several different streams of the faith. Maybe one is over the shape of the earth. Maybe another is over messianic Christianity, you, you thinking you've got to obey the law. Um, what about uh, the stream that, that is very um, enslaving to its hearers? You've got to stay tuned here or else the devil will, will get into your life. You might open a door. It's a fear-based structure. You know, you've got to watch what we're doing. You know, we're going to conquer the world, et cetera, et cetera. Maybe it's another stream of the faith. Maybe it's like you're like the, or the Corinthians, you know, to what Paul said in 1 Corinthians 1 and then also 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verses 1 through 15. Maybe you're like, I'm of Paul. I'm of Apollos. No, I don't belong to anybody. I belong to Christ only. You know, you may be in a particular camp. Well, what's happening is you inadvertently have, have qualified your faith in Christ by placing your faith in a structure rather than in Jesus Christ himself. You understand what I'm saying? In other words, your faith has become complicated. Paul wrote to the Corinthians that he said, I, my fear is that Satan through like the same way with subtlety he deceived Eve, that he will deceive you away from the simplicity of the gospel of Christ. So, so that's the big question. Is your faith complicated? Have you, has your faith become compl complicated since you believed? 
Again, 1 Corinthians 2, 5, Paul says, I want your faith to be in the not in the wisdom of man, but in the power of God. So how do you extricate yourself from this? I would say this, start walking with the Father. Start talking to him in a conversational way, thanking him for everything, finding ways to, to be thankful for the timing of your life, for the beauty of nature, for just waking up again. You know, the, the, the Jewish prayer when they wake up, thank you, Lord, I'm a, basically I'm alive to see another day. You know, if you have, have placed your faith through the conduit of, say, a political belief or a belief about the vaccine or a belief about uh, some other po political movement or some, like I said, shape of the earth, messianic, uh, dietary, whatever the stream of the faith is, how do you get back to that? You're, you, how do you get back from, from just putting your faith in the wisdom of man or seeing Jesus through that wisdom, through that um, that construct of man that says, this is the what Jesus wants. This is how you can please him better. And you've got to come through here. And you know what? In, in John chapter four, Jesus told the woman at the well, he said, he said, woman, he said, you don't know what you're worshiping. <laughs> he says the time is coming and now is when you won't worship in this mountain or that mountain because God is a spirit and he's looking for those to worship him in spirit and in truth. Paul told the Athenians in Acts chapter 17, if you read from about verse 20, well, pick up the conversation, say around 20 through 24 through 28 in there. And he said this, he said, God doesn't live in a building made with hands. <laughs> saying that he created all things uh, and gave life to every living thing on the earth. So he doesn't live in a building made with hands. In him we live and move and have our being. Christ is in us, the hope of glory. So so that's my question and my solution for you today. Do you have are you is your faith being lived through the structure of man? Have you placed your faith in the wisdom of man rather than the power of God? If you don't see the power of God in your life, you have to ask yourself why that is. You know, do you go to a powerless church? And I'm not talking about miracles here and there. I'm talking about a church where it's just wisdom presented, it's ideas presented, it's just teaching, but there's not the relationships that engender, that, that promote and develop an interaction, which is where you see the Lord working. You know, a few years ago, a couple, well, three years ago now, the Lord in a visitation told me that there's coming a time when house church will be the main way of doing church. And yes, that happened to a degree, certainly in the pandemic uh, of 2020, where churches shut down and everything. There's another time coming um, through for different reasons and, and different things like that, um, that church in the house is going to become very popular. And, but when he was talking about that, he said, he said that, that, the church in the house, he said, that is where I am moving. That is where miracles will be seen and prayers will be answered. And and to those on the outside, they will look at, at groups of house churches and then realize that those people have their needs met. Those people are getting their prayers answered. And the reason is, isn't because he's not in the giant structure of the auditorium. It is rather that that the Lord has designed it so that righteousness is proven within the framework of relationships. And the only way to see miracles besides our own life is by having relationships with other people in Christ, healthy, secure relationships in Christ. And that means home-based church. That means relationships with those in your sphere of influence and should be a living, growing thing so that your faith is in the power of God because you see Christ at work in that person across the living room from you. You hear their testimonies. You hear about the answered prayer. You see what's going on. You can testify in your own life about the timing and the blessing in your own life so that your faith is not within coming through a structure. Jesus isn't presented through a structure to you. And then if that structure falters or something like that, you're left confused and wondering what's going on. If that's been you in the past, then I encourage you to get back to just a one-on-one -on -one talk with the Father, a one-on-one -on -one relationship. You know, in Acts 3.16, when Peter and John were called before the authorities and, 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 and what had happened was they were on their way up to the temple area uh, to teach about Jesus and everything, and there was a lame man, and he ended up getting totally healed. And so the authorities called them before them and, and said, how, do you, how did this man get healed? And in Acts 3.16, Peter says this, through faith in the name of Jesus, this man stands before you whole. Now, not only does Acts 3.16 disprove cessationism, <laughs> in other words, as long as there's faith in the name of Jesus, people will be getting healed. Through faith in the name of Jesus, this man stands before you whole. But it also points to the fact that, that Peter and John weren't relying on the temple structure 
to funnel their faith through, that their personal faith of Christ in them, the hope of glory, was enough for that man to say, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. And it was through faith in the name of Jesus, the man was made whole, not accompanied by any other structure and not through any other structure, but first and foremost, through their own faith and then recognizing Christ in each other. So that's my encouragement and, and, and guidance today to, to double check yourself. First Corinthians 2, 5 is your faith in the wisdom of man or in the power of God? Paul said, I want your faith to be in the power of God. And also 1 Corinthians 1 17, where Paul said that the wisdom of men nullify or make the word of God, the power of God of no effect. So if you are feeling like your faith is uh, having no effect, double check yourself. Maybe you placed your faith in the wisdom of men. Maybe one particular stream of the faith or another is who you identify with rather than just Christ in you. The simple faith of the believer is what it's all about. All right, God bless. Visit our website, cwowi.org. Also know I've done two interviews now on the YouTube channel, Deep Believer. One about my visit to heaven and the second one about the things that the Lord taught me when he appeared to me to teach me how the Father communicates. It will be a huge blessing to you. I went into some detail on other visitations as well. Um, so anyway, and visit our website, cwowi.org. All right, God bless.